The story of the tyre is one of the most transformative developments in human industry, a piece of technology so familiar that most people rarely stop to think about it. Yet without it, modern transportation, construction and farming would look completely different. The tyre's origins are a blend of invention, experimentation and adaptation. From primitive wheels wrapped in solid rubber to the massive steel-belted giants found on modern combines, dump trucks and loaders. Let's go back to where it all began. Long before the word tyre ever existed, early civilizations used solid wooden wheels. The oldest known wheel discovered in Slovenia and dating back more than 5,000 years was simply a circular wooden disc attached to an axle. These wheels did their job but lacked flexibility. Every bump, every rock was transmitted directly into the vehicle. For centuries, this didn't change much. Wooden wheels dominated ancient carts, wagons and chariots. By the late 1700s, however, progress in metallurgy and craftsmanship led to a new form of protection for these wooden wheels, the first iron tires. Blacksmiths in the 18th century began fitting iron bands around wagon wheels. These iron tires were heated until they expanded, then hammered onto the wooden wheel. As they cooled, they shrank tightly in place. The result was a more durable wheel that resisted wear and splintering. These iron tires allowed carriages and carts to travel longer distances and carry heavier loads, crucial for the early stages of industrial expansion. But they also introduced new problems. The ride was extremely harsh, noise levels were high and traction on wet or uneven surfaces was poor. For farming and industrial work they dug deep ruts into the ground. It was time for something softer, and that's where rubber came in. Natural rubber, made from latex extracted from rubber trees, was known to indigenous peoples in South America long before Europeans encountered it. They used it to waterproof clothing and make balls that bounced, something entirely foreign to European explorers. But early rubber had one major problem. It became sticky in heat and brittle in cold. That changed in 1839, when American inventor Charles Goodyear accidentally discovered the process of vulcanization. By heating raw rubber with sulfur, Goodyear made it durable, elastic and resistant to temperature changes. This discovery revolutionized the use of rubber. Soon it began appearing in shoes, hoses, gaskets and eventually wheels. The first use of rubber on wheels began in the mid-1800s with solid rubber tires. They were exactly what the name suggests, thick, dense rubber rings fitted around iron or wooden wheels. Solid rubber tires offered several advantages. They reduced vibration, improved traction and didn't puncture. However, they were heavy and offered little flexibility. These tires were ideal for slow-moving vehicles like early industrial carts, wagons and eventually the first tractors and steam-powered rollers used in construction and agriculture. While solid rubber was an improvement, it still wasn't enough for the growing world of transportation. The next step required air. The real breakthrough came in 1845, when Scottish inventor Robert William Thompson patented the world's first pneumatic, meaning air-filled, tyre. Thompson's design used a hollow rubber tube filled with air and encased in leather. The idea was revolutionary. It offered a smooth ride, absorbed shocks and reduced rolling resistance. Unfortunately, the materials and manufacturing processes of the time couldn't make it practical. Thompson's design never caught on. Over 40 years later, another Scotsman, John Boyd Dunlop, would independently reinvent the concept. In 1888, Dunlop, a veterinarian in Belfast, was trying to make his son's tricycle ride more comfortably. He wrapped a thin rubber sheet around the wheels, sealed it and inflated it with air. The difference was immediate. The ride became smooth and quiet, and the idea caught attention quickly. Dunlop patented his pneumatic tyre, and it soon became a commercial success. The timing was perfect, bicycles were exploding in popularity, and Dunlop's invention offered an enormous performance advantage. By the mid-1890s, as automobiles appeared, tyre companies began adapting pneumatic tyres for motor vehicles. A key innovation came from France in 1891 when Edouard and André Michelin developed the first removable pneumatic tyre. 
Before this, tires were glued directly to the wheel, making repairs difficult and time-consuming. The Michelin Brothers detachable tire could be easily taken off and replaced, an essential step for vehicles that traveled long distances and often suffered punctures. This design soon spread across Europe and the automotive world. It set the stage for the entire tire industry of the 20th century. The rise of the automobile quickly led to innovations that spilled into other sectors, including agriculture and construction. In the early 1900s, most tractors and industrial machines still ran on steel wheels. These were often equipped with cleats or lugs for traction, especially on soft ground. However, steel wheels were heavy, damaged soil and caused excessive vibration. Farmers needed something that could carry weight while still being gentle on the ground. That change came in 1932, when Firestone introduced the first pneumatic tractor tire. Harvey Firestone, founder of the Firestone Tire and Rubber Company, saw the potential of air-filled tires for farming equipment. He had close ties with Henry Ford, whose Fordson tractors were becoming increasingly popular. The first pneumatic tractor tires were large, rounded and heavily treaded. Compared to steel wheels, they reduced soil compaction, improved fuel efficiency and made tractors much faster on the road. Farmers were initially skeptical. Rubber tires on heavy machines seemed risky. But demonstrations soon proved the benefits. By the late 1930s, rubber tires had largely replaced steel wheels in farming. The transformation was massive. Farms became more mobile, work became smoother, and machines could operate at higher speeds without shaking themselves apart. The construction and mining industries adopted pneumatic tires more gradually. Heavy machinery like loaders, scrapers and dump trucks demanded durability over comfort. In the 1940s and 1950s, specialized off-the-road tires were developed for these machines. Companies like Goodyear, Firestone and Michelin began producing reinforced tires with thick sidewalls and tough tread compounds. These tires evolved alongside the machines they served, from early Caterpillar scrapers and Euclid dump trucks to today's massive Komatsu and Liebherr mining trucks. As machines grew larger, tires had to keep up. Some of the world's biggest mining truck tires today stand over 13 feet tall and weigh several tons each. One of the most important advancements in tire history came in 1946, when Michelin introduced the radial tire. Traditional bias-ply tires were made with layers of fabric cords crisscrossing diagonally inside the rubber. This gave strength, but also created heat and limited flexibility. Radial tires, by contrast, used cords that ran perpendicular to the direction of travel, with steel belts added under the tread. The result was better fuel economy, longer life, and improved traction. Radial technology first took hold in passenger vehicles, but by the 1970s and 1980s, it spread into agriculture, construction, and heavy trucking. For farmers, radial tires meant less soil compaction and better flotation. For construction and mining, they meant longer wear and improved stability. The modern tire industry is dominated by a few major players that trace their roots back to these early days. Michelin, Goodyear, Bridgestone, Firestone and Continental. Each has contributed to tire innovation in different ways, from Goodyear's early aircraft and truck tires to Michelin's introduction of radial technology and Bridgestone's dominance in heavy off-road applications. By the late 20th century, tire technology had evolved to include synthetic rubber compounds, steel reinforcement, computer-designed tread patterns and self-sealing materials. Another turning point came during World War II. The war created an enormous demand for rubber, but natural rubber supplies, primarily from Southeast Asia, were cut off. This crisis accelerated the development of synthetic rubber, produced from petroleum-based materials like butadiene and styrene. By 1945, the United States was producing more synthetic rubber than natural rubber ever had before. After the war, Synthetic rubber became standard in tire manufacturing, allowing better control over properties like heat resistance, wear and elasticity. In the 21st century, tires have become complex pieces of engineering. Modern designs use advanced materials, computer simulations and precision manufacturing. 
Sensors are now being integrated into heavy equipment tires to monitor pressure, temperature, and load in real time. This helps operators reduce downtime and prevent blowouts, a huge advantage in mining and construction. Meanwhile, tire recycling and sustainability have become major concerns. Manufacturers are experimenting with bio-based rubbers, retreading programs and even airless tires, which eliminate the risk of punctures entirely. Michelin and Bridgestone are both testing airless concepts for industrial and agricultural machines, hinting at what could be the next revolution in tire technology. The tire's journey, from an iron ring on a wooden wagon to an intelligent, sensor-equipped rubber composite, mirrors the broader history of industrial progress. Each stage solved a new problem, opening doors for faster travel, better productivity and greater comfort. Without the tyre, the modern world would quite literally not move. From tractors to dump trucks, from the smallest wheelbarrow to the largest mining hauler, the tyre remains one of the most essential and overlooked inventions in machinery history.